I'm Asian, and you'll need to know this later. When I was in the second grade, we used to have history, and I always hated it. And one time, I sat down and the teacher started talking, and I closed my eyes to go to sleep. He said to open my eyes and focus, and I told him I wasn't sleeping. I'm just Asian. Wow, this man's over here playing 40 chess in the second grade. That's crazy. I mean, he really put his teacher in an awkward position. What is he gonna say? He's not Asian? I mean, he gets to do whatever he wants now. The man found the universal loophole to sleep in any class. <laughs> Oh my god, uh, you know, you know, it's, I refuse to switch off the sun so his pumpkin could light up. You, you do realize it's only 4 o'clock. You have a couple more hours and then it'll be dark. Come on, James. The funny thing is, I know where this guy's coming from. Because when I was younger, I really, really liked Superman. I really liked being Superman for Halloween and I was very upset that I could only be outside as Superman for one day. And I begged my parents to just let me, you know, go to school in my Superman costume because I didn't think there was a problem with it. I'm Superman. But I struck a deal. I could wear the Superman costume outside the house and inside the house as long as it was the weekends. And I, I took that deal. I took the compromise and my life has been better for it. So yes, I could be wearing my Superman costume right now. You don't even know it. Ever since my daughter found out our plant, Serena, wasn't getting enough sunlight, she insists on taking her out for walks while holding her up to the sun. That is so adorable. Oh my gosh. I wonder how many times a day she walks like that with the plant. That's so cute. I would just encourage you. I'd be like, all right, this is like a little walk after school. Take out your plant and we can, we can chill out and get a little bit of exercise and get to have a little bit of comfort with your pet plant. That is so adorable. My daughter seriously took a bite out of this eraser. The better question is like, what was going through your daughter's mind to convince her, hmm, maybe this eraser would be like a nice snack. Like seriously, that's not just a bite, that's a solid chew. The funny thing is, is that your daughter's not alone. I remember being in elementary school and there was a bunch of people who would bite the erasers off like the bottom of their pencils. And I never understood why people did that. I, I never got it. Maybe it's just a kid thing. I never did it, but hey, let me know in the comments down below if you bit erasers. <laughs> this is great! Okay, so my three-year-old saw me pull a tampon out, and now she's going around saying mommy had a mouse in her butt. I have several questions. Yes, this, yes, I have many questions. I have, have many questions. One, how did you get in the situation to where your daughter just walked in on you doing that? And, and two... Are you ever gonna are you ever gonna explain to your daughter what was going on? Because I think at this point you just gotta you just gotta enter that conversation. You just gotta lean into it. Granted though, she's three. There's a good chance she'll never remember this. And I know I'm not alone. I think all of us just woke up one day and we were five years old. And then I think just life started after that. For me especially, anything before year five is a guess. It's an estimation. I have estimated memories. I don't even know if they're real. Oh. 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 You know what? I think we can turn this into a PSA. You know, we're just having a real issue with people having kids when they're not supposed to be having kids. Yeah, just start putting this picture on posters and, uh, you know, just stapling them anywhere. Schools, libraries, bus stations, anywhere. And you'll see a lot of people making rational choices <laughs> when it concerns creating children, because, oh no. I seriously wouldn't know what I'd do. I think I would just enter the space and then immediately leave. Just slowly close the door and let let my child, let that king do what he needs to do. You know, let him be creative while I, you know, just encounter other adult problems. Like, you know what, we're gonna just table this. We're gonna just we're gonna put this to the side, put a pin in it. I'm gonna go downstairs and do my taxes because right now I can't deal with two issues in my life, especially if this is the second one. <laughs> so this morning, Jane and I were getting ready together and I gave her some gummy vitamins while we were all getting dressed. Then we brushed our teeth, and she was stalling and spitting out her toothpaste. I said, come on, spit out the toothpaste. And her response was, I can't, I don't want to spit out the gummies. Um, uh, huh? This child just brushed her teeth with gummy vitamins still in her mouth. You can't make this stuff up. Parenting a six-year-old is wild, folks. And shout out to the kids who had the Flintstone vitamins, and I'm not talking about the simp gummy ones, not, not those ones, I'm talking about the chalk ones. The ones that, you know, just required so much water, required more water than the ocean has to give for you to swallow them, because they were just dry as hell. I had those, and yep, I would take five at a time, because I thought they were sweet. I don't know why, I think I was a crackhead when I was eight years old. You see that right there? You see that right there? It's a screw from the kid's bed. He swallowed it just in the middle of the night because he wanted to. Simply because he had the time and he wasn't asleep. 
I, I don't know why. I just, the OP didn't go any deeper than that. <laughs> okay. He, they literally can't take it out of him. He, they ju he just has to pass it. I remember when I was five that I tried to go Super Saiyan in elementary school, but I got in trouble for screaming, and a teacher told me why I was screaming, and I told her that I was trying to go Super Saiyan. I really don't get why that teacher was so upset. He gave him an answer. You know, he was trying to go Super Saiyan. Now, I'm sure we all had that friend who at least attempted to go Super Saiyan. I had one and it was cringy as hell to watch him do it. He tried to prove it to all of us during recess. <laughs> I wish I had a phone then, but I didn't. <laughs> this man was screaming for like a solid, a solid nine minutes of screaming. Okay, so what I'm about to read to you is a letter from a child for their mother on Mother's Day. The child's eight years old, and I'm gonna read it to you as it's written because I respect art in its purest form. I will not change it at all. So let's, let's, just, let's just jump into it. I love you. You are special. You are one of a knid. Breakfast? In bed? You are that special. You need something as sweet, as sweet as you. So we gave you apple juice. Yummy eggs for you. To yizzy bread with jelly. Happy Mothers. Haha, <laughs> not today! This reminds me when I was young, and my cousin told me that I should inhale a crystal light packet. I thought he was implying that I should inhale it through my nose. He really meant through my mouth, and I could smell lemon for a week. Now, I know a lot of you guys are familiar with the candy fun dip, right? I remember in sixth grade, there was this guy who just had just full-blown 100% crackhead energy, and went out of his way to just snort a bunch of fun dip. To make a long story short, this kid had a very uncomfortable visit to the nurse because his entire lungs were burning. All of his lungs and nasal passages were on fire. The dude was screaming the entire time. He snorted sugar. You don't, you don't do that. Once when I was a kid, I went to take my medicine and I jumped up on the counter and I saw someone staring at me through the window. I screamed, ran down calling my mom, and as I heard her, I still screamed mom. And by the time I got to her side, I began to laugh really hard because I realized that I just saw my reflection in the window and I was just laughing. Then my mom asked me what was wrong and all I could say was my reflection was in the window through laughs. Hey, donut! I ever tell you about the time my three-year-old John got in trouble for hiding under my car in the driveway, so I put him in the corner for timeout, and then I found him sitting in timeout sticking a fork in the electrical outlet. I guess this is a typical child activity, but I never did that. I never ever was curious about electrical sockets or trying to stick anything inside of them. My, my specialty was playing with fire. I was that kid. My parents knew that I had a problem and would hide like all sorts of lighters and any, any accelerant away from me because they were so terrified that I was going to eventually burn down the house. And then miraculously, I just grew out of it. I just stopped caring about fire. I don't know what was wrong with me, but I just found it to be really interesting when I was younger. Alright, well, I got an idea. I'm gonna flick it over. Okay, alright, cool. <laughs> I just had the best encounter with a child at Kmart. I was in an aisle shopping and this girl and her dad came around the corner. The girl sees me and excitedly exclaims, THERE'S A HUMAN HERE! To which the father replied, YES! There's humans everywhere! I'm a girl with really short hair, and my school has a uniform, and once I was walking back from my bus stop back home, there was a little kid playing in the front yard. She saw me and yelled pretty loudly to her mother, MOMMY! WHY IS THAT LITTLE BOY WEARING A SKIRT? I tried to keep myself from laughing as the mother looked horrified. She said something to the kid, but I couldn't tell what. This has become a running joke in my friend group. On a side note, it, it may be just me, but anytime I like notice somebody who looks like extremely androgynous, like he, they could look like any gender, it, it, it kind of frustrates me a little bit. I'm like, what, what are you? What alien ma Martian? Like it messes with me. I don't know why it does. It really shouldn't. It's not like I treat them any differently. It's just internally. I'm like, what the? What am I looking at? Mm-hmm, yeah, you're reading this right, yeah, I won't let him eat the cat's food, and now he's frustrated with me. This is what I signed up for. I wanted a child, and now the child wants to eat the cat's food. I don't know why. The, the kitchen is stocked, yet the cat's food seems real appetizing to him, and I, I just, I guess I'm not being fair and not letting him eat that. Things I find on my school bus. Looks innocent, right? I mean, it's just a fortune teller. Now let's look at it closely. Halloween? Thanksgiving? Christmas? Easter? I thought you were supposed to put colors on the outside. Oh well. Let's go deeper. 
just numbers. It makes sense. What happens if I pick 10 or 11? You suck at playing games. What? The Easter Bunny isn't real. Okay. What about 6 or 19? You will have a bad dream. You will eat McNuggets. For some people. What? What about 12 and 13? You will lose a pencil. You will poop this week. I sure hope I'm gonna poop this week. What about 8 and 7? You will eat 15 whole pies. Pie? And for the finale, you will drop out of high school. Who made this? Like, honestly, who made this? Have a great day! Okay, so it's World Book Day. I dress my son up as Peter Pan. Everything is great. He's running around with a three-inch phone knife, and he's threatening to cut people's eyes out. We had to have a little chat before school and remind him that Peter Pan is the good guy. He cried. I don't know why, but when you're eight years old or smaller, for some reason, being the bad guy is always the fun part of the game. Or anything you're a part of. It's like, yes, I get to bother people with no consequences, because it's all pretend. <laughs> Scissors! <laughs> you really thought you were going to get this far in the video without seeing any questionable art? <laughs> you should know me better. Of course, I went out of my way to look for some of the best drawn scissors by the smartest minds on the planet. And doesn't it look like a pair of scissors? It's all curved, like like scissors usually are. Oh my god, sweet Jesus, she's crying at me right now because I wouldn't let her drink the chemicals under the sink. Yeah, yeah, so we, we drove two and a half hours all the way to San Francisco just to take a picture of the Golden Gate Bridge, and she's upset because the Golden Gate Bridge isn't actually golden. That is so precious. Oh my god, it's, mm, it's so precious. Look at her try. She's trying to help out the statue. Ugh. This is either a sign of her intrinsic goodness and like really nice soul, or the fact that she has some baller parents, but whoever, whoever it is, whoever's fault it is, you've already succeeded at creating a good person. Hey, Elise. You, you drew this at school today, huh? Bob. Bob. It's a bunny rabbit named Bob. Okay. His name is Bob? Yeah. Okay. Bob. <laughs> Emily. Gwen, stop. Stop. Stop it. Me. Emily, why are you yelling at your sister? She won't stop talking and I don't want to hear her. I just want to tell a story. No. Emily, let Gwen tell a story. Fine. Once upon a time, there was a princess, and her name was Emily. Princess Emily had a beautiful smile. Oh, that's so sweet. And then she got hit by a car. Gwen! Oh man, if you ever had a sibling in any capacity, you can identify with this strongly. <laughs> my kid looking over my shoulder as I sign an email. You're not a doctor! Yes, I am. What do you think I was studying for all the time when you were little? Oh, I thought you liked reading books and crying. This is really cute and funny, but at the same time, I think you're lying, because it sounds way too, like, way too staged. No way did your kid actually say that to you. I I have no way of proving that it's a lie, but it's, it seems like you made this up to try to be funny. Yeah, I might be gothic. Yeah, I might not have a lot of friends. And yeah, I might not like to wear clothes that other people like to wear. So yeah, I'm unique. Don't ladle me. The story behind this picture is so hilarious and OP essentially summed it up like this. His little sister a while back was going through a goth and like alternative phase. So she bought a labeler and started putting labels on stuff. And she put a label on herself saying, don't label me. But she was 12 and didn't know how to spell label. So uh, yeah, this is how this picture was to be created. Kylie, you're not locked in. Kylie. Let me out. Kylie, it's not Let attached. Me out. <laughs> okay, let's go. This morning, the toddler was making fun of the baby for not being able to read. I.e., she's so little, she's tiny, she doesn't know how to read a book. But the toddler also cannot read. Okay, so there was a spring in second grade where every single recess, I would walk out to the most remote part of the playground, die dramatically, and lie motionless for the entire 20 minutes. I was trying to trick a turkey vulture into coming down to eat me so I could grab it as a pet. Wow, I, I wouldn't have guessed. Your profile picture certainly doesn't suggest that. <laughs> Isabel's trying to get this guy's um, Snapchat. He's right there. I don't know if you can see him. Isabel, go ask for Snap! Oh my god. 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 Oh my god
my god, oh my god. Okay, Isabel, Isabel, hurry. Get out, get out, Isabel. <gasps> what? She's actually going. Oh my god. Wait, is she actually? No. No. No, she got in. She's she got in. My three-year-old calls Flonase mommy's special nose medicine, and now my neighbor thinks I do cocaine. Hey, you're not the only one. I remember in elementary school, there was this girl who used to have, like, smelly eraser pens, and she used to call the erasers nose candy. I... I... <laughs> don't know why. So, what's your darkest secret? When I was very little, probably around three or four, I used to play a game with my parents where I'd go to the bathroom and brush my teeth before bed, and when I got to the room, they'd pretend to be asleep, and I'd find creative ways to wake them up. Being really young, I thought my dad was like a superhero-style indestructible, and thinking so, I decided to try something that would hurt a kid like me, but not harm him at all, since he was big. So, I got a pencil that I found lying on the desk, and I tried to stab him in the eye with it. Luckily, he was peeking and stopped me just before I did it. To this day, it still gives me a sinking feeling in my stomach thinking about what might have happened. I think everybody thinks of their father like that at some point, and then all of a sudden you just realize that they're a person. I don't know when it happened for me, but I, I want to say from 0 to 10 years old, I thought my dad was Superman. Guys, just, ow, ouch, ow, ow. Oh my ow. god, Nick. I need scissors, it's getting red. Yeah. Don't have scissors. How the hell did you do Can we this? Cut it? Ow. I need to get my foot through it. Like, try and put my heel through it. I ain't gonna fret. Bruh, I just want someone who looks at me the way my brother looks at ketchup. Oh, look at him. He's so concentrated. He's so focused. He's like, which one? Which one should I choose? All of them are different. <laughs> when my son was three, he had a guinea pig named Rufus. One day, he left the cage open and Rufus disappeared. I bought a replacement Rufus, never told my son, and things were going to be fine until the original Rufus showed up and I had to pretend he was Rufus's cousin, Roger from Philly. Now that's what we call a supreme save. <laughs> Roger from Philly, that's the best you could come up with on the spot. <laughs> I used to think that priceless meant it had no worth, you know, priceless. So a TV show said priceless jewelry, I always thought cheap plastic crap from China. <laughs> <laughs> That's not nice. You have two ships. My six year old watched me pour Drano down his bathroom sink. What is that? Oh, buddy, it dissolves whatever gunk is clogging up your drain. Oh, cool. Even the screwdriver down there? I'm sorry, the what? Will you help okay. me set up just recording? Get this side. Okay, let me help him. Okay. Isaiah. Okay. In seventh grade one night, I was like, I really don't feel like going to school tomorrow. So I looked up how to get a fever. I found a tutorial that said to take a bath at the hottest temperature your bathtub will go, then stay up all night. I decided to try it and started the water for a steaming hot bath. It stung to get into it, and somehow I survived it for 30 minutes. When I was getting out, I felt dizzy, and then I fell on the floor and had a seizure. I woke up, and I saw the blinding ceiling lights of the bathroom, and the first thing I thought was, am I dead? And then I threw up in the toilet next to me and had a migraine for the night and later found out that I got first degree burns. So, long story short, don't do that. <laughs> well, he got one, he got his basket. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm telling my six-year-old about homeschooling for the next couple of months, and he asked if I had to do that when I was a kid, and I said no. And then he asked if chairs were even invented yet, so I think the first thing we'll study is his f***ing attitude. Right, so why are you upset right now? That one's not your banana, Madeleine. Your banana's around, you just need to find it.
I know you really want a banana, don't you? You said you could smell bananas. Well, yeah. I think it was that banana what I could smell. Right. It wasn't that banana. Yes, it was. Why don't you eat your um, eat your the rest of your breakfast whilst you think about where your banana might be? No, I need my banana now. Oh, um, I don't know what to suggest. So, Mummy's Mummy's coming in. Maybe we can ask her if she knows where your banana might be, because she can't find her banana. She thinks that's her banana, but that's not her banana. It's not the one on your plate, then. Me! So, do you think you're smarter than me? My five-year-old cousin with a bucket on his head about to run into a wall! Yes! When I was 10 years old, I got my hands on a book that taught me how to make gunpowder. Back then, as an 11 year old, I was not only able to source potassium nitrate and sulfur at the drugstore, I also wasn't questioned. I burned a log to harvest charcoal in our backyard fire pit, then went to work in my basement bedroom, carefully mixing the three in their proper amounts. It was done, smart kid, right? Nah, I put some on a spoon under a large glass bowl and lit it. Well. It dripped into the bowl and the whole thing went up. The bowl turned white hot and I dove behind my bed just in time for it to explode. My father yelled down the stairs, Yo, what the hell was that? I had said it was a firecracker. He called bullshit and then saw the large burn hole on my desk. Best part, they had just painted the basement. Uh, the sulfur smoke provided a nice new color and smell. We laugh about it now. I totally vibe with this guy because I did something similar in high school where I was trying to isolate sodium by mixing uh, sodium hydroxide and magnesium powder and then just burning the two. Long story short, I blew myself up and in the process created the world's dirtiest sodium that's not even good enough to use in any other experiments, but I just wanted to figure out ways to isolate sodium by myself where I didn't have to buy blocks of it off of like Alibaba or UnitedNuclear.com. But that's just, ah, uh, that reminds me of my youth. I always told people I met Michael Jackson, but now that I found the picture, man, what the fuck, who the fuck was this? What's up everybody, it's your boy Aileris, aka Panda Daddy, and I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, let me know in the comments down below, and leave a like if you like the video, and if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe, fam, what you doing, watch videos, and not subscribing, and if you're old, make sure you hit that bell so you can get these notifications every time. I hope you enjoyed the newest installment to the r slash kids are fucking stupid series, a lot of you guys wanted to see its comeback, so here it is, um, if you want to request any other Reddit videos, or horror stories videos, or any other content that wants to tickle your fancy, please let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to like the video i think i've already said that go ahead and do that please if you've already liked it unlike and then like again <laughs> with all that aside we have to thank the patreon supporters and so thank you to rachel finney jonas and hosmar thank you so much for your support it's greatly appreciated if you want to help support the channel and see some extra content go ahead and check out that patreon for one dollar a month you get to have all the extra horror stories content and maybe even extra reddit content i might just include some extra reddit <laughs> on the Patreon, uh, go ahead and check that out. If you want to support the channel in another way, you can go ahead and check out the merch store in the link in the description. There's a lot of cool clothes there that will help you not be naked outside. And as always, stay zesty.